Hey, welcome back to Engineers Workshop. I apologize, it's been a while since I've put out a video. I've been real busy getting the shop cleaned up for spring. Um, everything right now is covered in pollen, but uh, you know, thankful for the warmer weather. I've been trying to follow my new shop rules with the KNT and return my spindle offset to zero uh, so that I don't arbitrarily walk off and, and ruin a part. And so far, Fingers crossed, been uh, had some good luck with that. Wanted to tell you about a new couple of pieces of equipment that I brought into the shop. You know, probably 20 years ago, I came up with a concept that I thought was pretty unique was, you know, let's say I've someday got a lot of shop space. Wouldn't it be cool if I got other people together with uh, machining interest and we pooled together our, our tools and equipment and put together uh, space where we could work on uh, you know, bigger projects and utilize everybody's equipment and have more efficient use of the, of the tools and the space available. Wouldn't that be neat? Well, lo and behold, I'm inventing what is now known as a maker space, and that's kind of what I'm, I'm developing here. Um, these two pieces of equipment are not owned by me. It's my uh, buddy Heath who wanted to get into metalworking. And so he ended up buying two things from Doozer down in uh, North Carolina, an Acriturn uh, 1340 lathe that's in really nice condition, um, and a old Barnes late 1800s 20-inch drill press, which is just really neat looking, uh, really neat looking old drill press, flat belt from bottom to top. But unfortunately, there's a really sad tale of uh, getting these two pieces of equipment from Doozer shop back up to Richmond, Virginia. Now, neither of these machines is particularly big or heavy, so he took his full size, um, I think it's a Dodge, a Dodge pickup with a Cummins, down to North Carolina, and he's going to bring both, both machines back. And so they got everything loaded up. Doozer has a, a forklift, he's got a gantry crane that put these two items into um, Heath's truck and standing up and tied everything together and he goes up the highway coming back to Virginia, no problems. Well, entering Virginia, there's a portion where, I don't know if it's I-85, but it transitions over to 40 and then 29. So he's going around a, a curve and he said that the two tools shifted over and laid against the side of his pickup truck, which shifted, you know, all the way to the uh, passenger side. So he was able to get the truck off to the side of the road and stopped without incident. He gets out and he goes around and, and here's where it got nasty. He tried to upright the uh, drill press and the lathe, you know, top heavy on both of them, but in rocking those things, they just basically completely dumped out of the truck into the dirt beside the freeway. So what do you do now? He called me and we got a hold of a wrecker service that had, a, I think, a, a, a rollback with a winch on it. And he got both pieces of equipment taken to the shop. And there was, you know, there's knobs and there's loose stuff in the grass in the, in the dark. He had to find, um, they put the Acriturn laid flat in the bed of his truck. And he went ahead and he brought that back up to uh, Virginia. And we unloaded that probably, I don't know, 1 a.m. We just used the, the hoist in the building and, and got that thing out of the truck. And it was, this was a, kind of an interesting feat to get it to stand upright from being laying down. But uh, he went the next day and got the Barnes drill press and brought that up and unloaded it with, uh, with the hoist, no problems. So amazingly, there really wasn't significant damage to the equipment. There, you know, sheet metal... Uh, the chip pan and the motor, uh, the electrical cover on the backside got bent. The the cast motor bracket that it pivots on on the Acriturn uh, broke. Um, but you know, knobs knobs weren't bent. No, you know, the, the bed, the tailstock, all that's basically fine. Dirt embedded in the tool post, but we're starting to clean that up. Amazingly, the drill press, after you know, dumping out of a pickup bed into the dirt. It was completely fine. No castings broken, nothing bent, the you know, spindle sticking up. Absolutely fine from what I can tell. So let me take you over and show you these things and, and a couple other things we got going on in the shop here. So here's our Acriturn 1340. 
started cleaning up the front control panel. Um, nothing missing here. You can see where we've got uh, a you know, bend in the front edge of the chip pan. But you know, as the machine comes from, oops, that's uh, not threaded in all the way. As the machine comes from Doozer, all of this, uh, the bed, the hardened bed is in beautiful condition. We've got two chucks, uh, both three jaw. Tail stock is free. Let me bring you around to the back side. The motor just kind of uh, sits in here loose now because the cast bracket is intact, but it looks like just a, a cast iron piece with two uh, ears on it with a pivot shaft. That's what uh, broke because of the weight of the motor. Pecker head is a little bit dented. This uh, electrical panel on the back side probably took the worst damage, you know, but it'll flatten out. And the nice thing about the lathe is that Doozer mounted it on some pretty hefty casters. So when we want to reposition it, it's very easy to move. And for the uh, light duty work that we're going to be doing, I don't see where it has to be, you know, precision leveled and grouted in. Uh, we're just going to be machining some small parts on this. Now here's the real granddaddy. This is a Barnes 20 inch drill press. And Doozer dates it to the late 1800s by the fact that it has a round base. And they went to a square base uh, sometime around the turn of the century, he thinks. But quill is tight, but uh, moves freely. The chuck is a Morse 3 taper. This was really stuck badly, but through a a lot of application of uh, croil, heat, and some tapping, we got that out. Um, you can see that it's a flat belt drive from an idler shaft to the uh, upper, upper cross shaft. The babbitted bearings were replaced with actual pillow block tapered roller bearings. So uh, it's, a, it's a real nice uh, jack shaft assembly. Let me bring you around to the other side. The table on the column was stuck pretty bad, but we got that uh, freed up with a couple of good uh, thumps after a long application of uh, croil. But <laughs> take a look at this table. Let me bring you in closer. I think this table might hold the record for the most pecker holes in it of any drill press table. There, there is hardly any flat surface left. I mean, this thing, you know, because it can be swung, uh, off axis. They just took the opportunity to drill holes in every location. My son has uh, a drill press where the rectangular table rides on uh, uh, v -shaped, a V-shaped dovetail on the column so it can't be positioned off-center and it's freaking perfect. You know, not, not a single pecker hole in it because the drill always goes through the center hole of his table, but uh, I'll come up with some way to fill these and, and uh, flatten it up. Now, this does have the original arm assembly. This one was broken, but Doozer uh, brazed this up. And so this uh, has a number of ways of feeding it. You have a lever type feed through the worm. You can turn the hand wheel to get a precision feed. And the neat thing about this particular um, 
press was there was also a power feed available. And when this model had power feed, there was a bracket that mounted off of this stud, and it was a casting that had another jack shaft and a miter gear, and a second little uh, step pulley driving this, this counter shaft. And basically the way it worked was when the lever was upright and locked, the shaft would come off the back side of this worm wheel with another bevel gear that would engage the gear train coming up from the top shaft. And I don't have any of those components, but it looks simple enough to duplicate. I'm going to have a casting made with, uh, to hold the two shafts and get some miter gears and some, and some uh, step pulleys. And I'm going to transition this thing to uh, have the power feed also. Also have to mount a motor down on the foot. It is sitting on a couple of pieces of uh, eight inch C-channel. So I'll mount a motor bracket um, down in the lower right, driving the V-belt pulleys. And we'll get this thing powered up and uh, put some holes in some equipment. So it's a WF&J Barnes company. Rockford, Rockford, Illinois, USA. 20 inch drill. Got the original tag there, number 248. I have no idea with the serial numbers where that dates this machine, but according to Dozer, because of the round base, he puts it in late 1800s. Sneak peek under the canvas here. Look at that pollen. It's a black piece of uh, fabric. This is a 24 by 36, four inch thick uh, granite plate, granite table. It's a laboratory grade, or it's an A grade stone. It does have a calibration uh, sticker on it from 1998. The thing's probably been out of service for, you know, 20 years, but uh, very good shape. No. No chips or bites out of the corners. We're going to build a uh, table to um, have that thing sit on at a, at a convenient height. And uh, I'd like to make it uh, with some needle casters on it to uh, move around. You know, have like leveling feet where it'll where it'll uh, stand like a tripod um, to be level, and also be able to put a couple of bars in to pick up one end and roll it to a different location. I think that'd be a neat project. Over here, I'm gonna give you just a sneak preview peek of an 18 inch rotary table, an angle uh, plate that weighs over 100 pounds, and a much bigger inspection table. And there's the Quincy QGB25. More on that later too. Well, I hope you enjoyed that real quick video update on some of the new pieces of equipment we've got in the shop here. Hopefully getting back to putting out videos on a more regular basis as I get things cleaned up and we get some more projects uh, moving through the shop. I have been working on components for my son's uh, Spitfire conversion, his remotoring with a TDI, uh, 1.9 TDI diesel engine and a differential from a Datsun 510 that Always uh, opportunities to fabricate parts for that. So we'll get some of that stuff up on videos uh, and other interesting content to you here on Engineers Workshop. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing.